Collectively, we've trained thousands of people over the course of two and a half decades, and the largest percentage of those clients were parents. A large majority of them were parents that were busy, and uh, the subcategory of that that was the largest were moms, busy moms. So we became experts at getting busy moms fit and healthy with the constraints of their lifestyle. Today's episode, we're going to talk about that. You're busy. You don't have a schedule that's free. You might not have lots of equipment. But yes, you can get in incredible shape. Just do what we say in today's episode. Just so, do what we say. Just do what we say. <laughs> do I know. We you would never say that as a trainer, right? <laughs> just hire me, do what I do what I say, I tell you. No, this is um uh this, I mean, wouldn't you guys say this is probably the largest category of clients? Oh, that we got? not easily. It's yeah. not even close. It's yeah. by far the largest category. Now, uh, and I and I would consider that we we got pretty good at doing that over those decades. I would say that uh having a, a wife at home brought it into a whole nother perspective, oh, right? Yeah. And I'd say there's things today that I think about or communicate uh, when speaking to a mom that uh, is a little more unique. I think I helped a lot of moms back in the days, but I think having uh, that that close of a perspective that I didn't have before has uh, given me the words for uh, other things that I don't think I was probably communicating as as well before. Yeah, I would say that's a good observation. Same, um, because then you're in it and you see it directly, um, and you can see like I mean, uh, it's uh, it's tough because first off, getting fit is just hard or mm -hmm. consistently, I should say, right? Getting fit and staying fit and 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 you know staying consistent with that. That's hard for anybody, period, end of story. It's just tough. It's a tough thing to do. It's hard to maintain the discipline and the consistency. It's hard to find something that works for you. It's hard to understand how to train your body in a way that's effective, where you're not overdoing it, or you're not hurting yourself in a way that you know you feel like, this is great, I enjoy doing this type of deal. So it's hard across the board. But then you throw on top of it, you got kids yeah. and children, especially when they're young, are very, very demanding. Anybody who has little kids will tell you that all day long they're demanding. You, yeah. you might get a break here and there, but it's just demanding all day long. And then to make it even more challenging, it's unpredictable. So unlike a work schedule where you go to work at a particular time, you have lunch at a particular time, and then you finish at a particular time, typically. Yeah. Raising kids is not like that. Yeah, like nap times can be super unpredictable. Sometimes they go down for a half hour. For some reason, they wake up. The other time, they, they sleep longer. This one went down. This one didn't. Uh, you know, this is going on. They're a little sick. They're cranky. Um, they don't want to eat their lunch. Now I got to figure out. Something. So it's like just, it's just every day can be super unpredictable. So it's like, demanding and an unpredictable life. And then on top of it, you're trying to, you know, be consistent and with exercise. It's their, tough. their needs supersede your own at that point too, which is like, a, that's, that's the tough part of balancing and realizing that a full cup is much more productive than, you know, half empty to empty cup uh, to be able to keep it going and to be effective and, you know, have that kind of energy you need to be uh, good at all the other things going on in this, you know, sort of uh, chaotic uh, whirlwind that, uh, you know, Know, sometimes can can uh, be the environment that that a mom goes through. Well, that's why it's so important that you you create something or you design a a routine for yourself that complements your life versus this like daunting you know yeah, right. exercise program at the fall. I remember when when Katrina was and uh, and then you know she, obviously you have that that period of time right after the baby where the doctors say don't do anything right so she's she's you know somewhat That's sedentary six weeks something like that yeah six to eight weeks is I think kind of the standard um, even though I think she was back a little bit sooner than that uh, you know she was asking me what do I do right now I said listen don't don't overcomplicate this don't overthink this don't overdo this right now like start with just purely like mobility stuff what's beautiful about that is the baby can be laying right there on on the living room floor and you could be in there doing a lizard with rotation right afterwards and you are moving in the right direction creating good habits and you're already starting to lay the foundation for how I'd want you to train anyways even if you didn't have a kid these are things that would be good for you to do especially post having a child so yeah no that's a good point uh because what you're saying by the way is uh for anybody not just somebody who has kids and is busy in that sense is that people tend to overcomplicate things anyway they tend to put too much focus on the things that don't give them the greatest return and not enough time on the things that give them the greatest return and they don't do it in a way where it's effective and so they spin their tires that's almost everybody who starts working out or, or tries to do something with fitness to you know improve yeah. their fitness and health. 
It's true for everybody. But then again, you throw kids on top of that in that environment and it just complicates things even more. I, I, I think one of the biggest uh, things that I figured out in my career as a trainer was if I gave these people options so that whatever popped up, they had an option that was effective, mm -hmm. then they had more tools in the tool belt and they were less likely to miss their workouts, yeah. right? So it's like, you know, there's workouts you could do at the gym, but can you do things at home? Yes, here's some things you could do at home. Here's what that structure looks like. Can you do things at home for only 10 minutes? Because sometimes that's all you have, maybe twice or three times a day. <clears throat> or the things you can do at home that require no equipment, or you can use bands, or you can use body weight. And then when you do have that time, what can you do at the gym with weights and stuff like that? So it's like, here's your options. Here's how we're going to structure this. And then you can somewhat... And I'm saying somewhat because I know life can be almost impossible, but somewhat roll with the punches and develop this consistent, super effective. And I want to say that clearly, mm -hmm. super effective routine. You're not trading effectiveness for what I'm talking about. If you do this right, you're going to get incredible results, but you just got to know how to, how to put it together. Yeah. It's, and then speaking to those tools, it, it's like this, you know, finding that sort of hormetic dose, that right dose. So if it's a ther therapeutic dose, you can create like a therapeutic kind of session uh using mobility using like different movements to actually restore um you know energy and to get you to uh, feel like you know you, it's something that's a little bit less taxing and demanding but it also helps to kind of keep the momentum and keep um, stimulating the body in an adequate way and then also you know you can go to more some days where you have uh, a bit of that energy where you can express it a bit more and you can go a little more intense. And so now we're moving more towards our adaptation and muscle building. And so there's ways to kind of weave in and out based off of feeling uh, what's been going on uh, in your environment and also what's, you know, most best to apply here. Yeah. And that's, and by the way, cumulatively, you now have an effective routine. So you need to be able to do all of that. And that's true for anybody, by the way. So everything we're saying now, what we're going to talk about today actually applies to everybody. We're just being more specific to the to the general demands and challenges that uh, busy moms have. What's up everybody? Today's giveaway, the Fit Mom Bundle. We'll give that to one of you for free, but here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll notify you in the comments section. Now everybody else, we've put all the bundles that apply to the people that we talk about in today's episode at 60% off for a limited time. So that includes the Fit Mom bundle that I just talked about, the Bikini bundle, the Fabulous 40s bundle, and the Build Your Butt bundle. All of them, 60% off if you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code FITMOMS. That'll give you the entire hookup. All right, back to the show. Generally speaking, there, there are target areas that I think uh, you know moms tend to, to say, hey, this is what I want to focus on. Uh, the first one would be their core. And this is for obvious reasons. If you're a mom, especially if you have little ones, you just had kids or you just had a baby, the muscles of the core have to shift, change, and some actually have to atrophy, right? Yeah. They have to weaken in order to make room for growing baby. After the baby's born, if you don't train the core properly uh, according to where you're at, meaning you can't just jump into a core routine, there's proper movements and exercises, then your your risk of injury goes up and your results, uh, your, your the possibility of good results declines uh, quite a bit. Another one is your posture. Posture is greatly affected by pregnancy and breastfeeding and raising kids and holding kids. And if we don't work on m the muscles that support the type of posture that makes you feel good and you just jump into a workout, you'll actually strengthen a posture that is not beneficial. You'll actually just strengthen this, this, this new posture that you have, which will make things a lot more difficult and delay results. So posture is something that you want to consider quite a bit um, as well. And then, of course, this is common for most women anyway, but the glutes. Now, the glutes, of course, is aesthetic reasons. It looks nice to have developed butt or whatever. But also, this is part of the hip complex. Supports the low back, prevents things like low back pain, improves locomotion, gives you stability, um, and then, of course, it looks really good. So those are the areas that you, you know, really are things to really consider um, with people. And, of course, there's individual variances. You know, if you're listening, you may have other specific areas you want to work on. But generally speaking, those are the areas that tend to be communicated. And you can't stress enough the the posture and core thing, um, you know, coupled with mobility work, right? I remember telling Katrina this, and I know she was antsy to get back 
into lifting weights because she, you know, felt like she had been inconsistent, obviously, for that period of time and wanted to get her body back into shape. And what I had to explain to her is like the, people always confuse mobility work with like yoga. And I'm like, this is not the same. We're not, right. you're not relaxing and just stretching. Mobility for, strength training. Yes. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a form training. of strength training. And so if I can correct your posture, work on your core and like start to really strength train in the most safe, best way we can, like this is the most ideal way for you to start before you progress. Not to mention what's great is you can do all this in the living room. And so like I had to convince her that. This isn't just you sitting around and yoga stretching and you're not not progressing towards your aesthetic goals that I know that you want to get to. This is actually the faster, better way, even though in your head, it doesn't feel like it. You yeah. think- uh, You're a, bulletproofing the the framework for you to then be able to add substantial load. So that now your success is really riding on um, you know how, how much we can kind of push that out instead of being limited because we haven't- put that attention there to really be able to sustain, you know, a good amount of, of load and, and to be able to stimulate the muscles in that direction. Yeah. Mo mobility is not flexibility, by the way, flexibility is a component of mobility, but in particular, um, especially when you're pregnant and post-pregnancy in the years after, uh, you have probably really good flexibility, but you lack the strength and stability within that flexibility. So you don't have good mobility. So what happens, you go do an exercise that you think is going to be really effective and you're just not, the muscles aren't firing the way they should. You're not going to get the great results. Or what's, what's real common is you get hurt. You're like, my low back now is bothering me when I'm doing these exercises I used to do before. Or, you know, I, I am doing core exercises, but I still have this lower belly pooch. Like what's going on? Why can't I like get my, my core tighter? Or my body's just not responding. Well, you didn't do... What you need to do first, this is for everybody, by the way, and this is a priority for everybody, is mobility first, always. If you can't connect properly to muscles and you can't fire them in stable, solid ways, adding weight and reps is a waste of time. If anything, that's going to take you backwards. So it's always mobility first. Now, the beauty of this is mobility work, like Adam said, requires no equipment. Mm -hmm. It requires no long workouts. You can do mobility work throughout the day in 30 second, 60 second, 90 second increments. Even literally. in your chair. I mean, 100%. There's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, if you have good mobility movements, which is strength training. They are strength training. They just don't they just don't require equipment. And you're starting out and you're doing this, or let's say it's a day where you couldn't make it to the gym, throughout the day there's probably at least 5 to 10 moments where you could do something for 30 seconds to 60 seconds of mobility. So when you add it all up throughout the whole day, you did like 30 minutes of, you know, or 15 minutes of, of mobility strength training work. You actually got throughout the whole day something that is, you know, close to strength training or is strength training just with the mobility focus. So the beauty of it is it's super convenient, doesn't require equipment, doesn't require space, very little space. And it's something that you could do, again, you could do this on an almost daily basis. In fact, if this is all you did, if you're not working out now and all you did was work on mobility throughout the day because you had just, it was just too crazy. You couldn't go anywhere. You had no equipment. You couldn't do anything. And all you did were these small increments of mobility. You would see substantial results, of course, combined with a, with a good diet, but you would see substantial sculpting results over the course of like six months. So this is not like a small thing. Like this is a big deal. And that's why it's the first thing that we're-, we're Well, this is, I mean, Katrina did. And she, so we did, we focused here for like the first month. So the first month, uh, it, which at first I remember her being like, oh my God, this is all mm -hmm. I'm going to be. And I said, just hang on. By the way, uh, sweating after these mobility workouts too. So it's not like these are like- Oh, these, you, if you do it right. It's, you yeah. Fall. And that's what I explained to her. I was like, no, listen, if you, if you intensify the end ranges of motion in these movements, I promise you're going to feel like you got a great little workout mm -hmm. after doing all of them. So for the first month, that's what it looked like for us. And then we progressed into two days a week in anabolic. That was like the, the next transition was that. And of course, we kept a couple of the mobility drills and things that she was doing beforehand. That was something that I wanted to continue all the way through, like keeping her good posture and, and continuing to strengthen her core through the program. But then now we were ready to kind of start to do load, which MAPS Anabolic was the That's transition. the second, yeah, that's the second piece is, you know, your mobility first because we're setting the foundation, we're progressing through that. And then when you have those opportunities to do a good workout, the primary pursuit, the thing you should aim for and measure is strength. Strength is in this case, in many cases, but definitely in this case, the best 
pursuit you can go after because if you're getting stronger, you're probably feeding yourself properly. If you're getting stronger, you're definitely most likely building some muscle. If you're getting stronger, that muscle is going to contribute to a metabolism that's faster, which means you're going to burn body fat easier and you can eat more while burning more body fat. And if you're getting stronger and building muscle and speeding up your metabolism, your hormones are also probably organizing themselves in a way to do so, which is a uh, hormone profile that is more youthful. So growth hormone levels are better, more balance of estrogen and progesterone, testosterone levels, yes, this is important for women too, are optimized. So if you pursue getting stronger then you're and you get stronger, you're moving in the right direction versus if I look at the scale or the mirror or almost anything else, how sore I get or anything else, all of those can or cannot mean good things. Oftentimes they mean bad things, especially if that's all you're measuring. For example, if you're just looking at the scale, boy, can you lose muscle and lose weight on the scale and feel like you're progressing when in fact you just made yourself actually a higher body fat percentage. You just set yourself up for, for you know much more struggle in the future. But if you focus on getting stronger, like this is this is where you're where you're probably going to do your best. This is where I had a lot of success. I would get mm -hmm. these moms and we'd be like, they'd say, I want to lose weight. I want to do this. And I'd say, I just want you to add 50 pounds to this lift right here. And they would laugh and I'd say, no. And yeah. I'd explain to them. And then we would do it. And that was it. Once I showed them what that felt like and what it did for them, that was it. That's all they wanted to do. Yeah, it's interesting, like, you know, taking from postpartum and like what you're really dealing with is like an entirely different body. You have to get back in your body. And that's all through that that process of of control, stability, and you know, just really being able to sustain certain postural positions again and, and to be able to feel uh, you know, your body react appropriately and to to respond so it, it maintains that properly. And then, you know, we get to the point where we start adding load and we work on strength, and then it's like like we feel like ourselves again, like you can get to that point where you feel yourself. Now we're even going even further. If you did it, if you spent that amount of time there, it's amazing how much that accelerates, uh, you know, once you get to the strength phase, like even beyond what you're capable of. So now the one modification that uh, Katrina and I made to anabolic while we were doing this, which was, this was obviously almost four years ago. This was before MAPS 15 is we would actually break up uh, anabolic throughout the day. Totally. It just worked so much better, which by the way, had, I think uh, some of the, was, that doesn't reduce your results at all. No, not, no, yeah. she got phenomenal results that way. This is also what inspired, uh, the creation of maps 15 for other people too, that have similar type of schedules. It just worked so well for her to be able to just break away for these, in these little 10, 15 minute or single, like just one exercise she would go do and then come back, uh, worked really, really well. And so that was the goal. The goal was, okay, We've, we've focused a lot on a, a mobility. Now we're going to transition into strength training. Okay, what's great about anabolic is it's a full body routine. So I know even if you have a really crazy week and you only get one workout, you at least are moving in the right direction and you're going to hit all body parts. Now the next hurdle and challenge is, oh my God, how often do I get a full hour by myself. Well, okay, don't worry about that. Let's just do it in these 10 to 15 minute increments throughout the day until you complete the workout. And that ended up working incredible yeah, for her. Yeah. So generally you want to get stronger. Generally, that means strength gains in any movement is beneficial. Now that doesn't mean that strength gains in any movement is, are, are all equivalent. Some strength gains are going to give you way more reward than other strength gains. For example, if you get stronger in some of the big, what are known as the big lifts, like a deadlift or a squat or an overhead press or a barbell row or a bench press, you're going to see more effects physically and visually than if you get stronger on other exercises that aren't in those big categories, like a curl or a lateral or a donkey kickback type of deal. Getting stronger is still good, but if you got stronger in a squat, you'll see way more in the mirror than if you got stronger with, let's say, a donkey kickback or a bicep curl. Okay, so... So, and the reason why I'm saying that is, is getting strong is good, but make sure you get strong uh, or focus on the, on the, on the exercises that give you the most return. Now, once you're generally getting stronger, cause you got to do this before you do the next step. Once you start to really see yourself just generally getting stronger in some of these big lifts, in these whole body exercises, then the next kind of phase would be to now target specific parts of your body. Now, what does that look like? Now, here's where people make a mistake. I'll start there. Is they're doing this great full body routine. They've got some consistency going on on a weekly basis. They're getting stronger overall. 
And then they're like, you know what I want to do? I want to put more emphasis on my butt or more emphasis on my shoulders or my back or my core. And then what they do, here's the mistake they make, is they add more exercises and more what's called volume to those areas. And they and, and they keep the whole workout yeah. the same. They haven't eliminated anything else. Right. Added. So they're just throwing more on top of it. Now, this is why that's a mistake. Because the total volume that you're doing that's working for you, you've probably hit the sweet spot of volume. And it's a sweet spot because less produces less results, more also produces less results. So if I take that sweet spot and then add volume to it, because now I want to work on a specific part of my body, I'm going to move out of that sweet spot. Even though I'm putting more emphasis on that particular body part, I'm actually going to get less overall and less in including on that specific body part because now I'm doing too much volume overall. So that's one of the big mistakes that people make. So what you do is when you've got this routine that's working, you're building general strength, and then you want to start to get more specific. You don't just add volume. You take volume away from some areas so that you can add it to the specific area. So think of it this way. You have 100 chips that you can use. You, you, you can use them however you want. If you want to add more to one area, you got to take them from another area. This is how you can get specific with your workouts and put more emphasis on your glutes or your back or your shoulders or Why whatever. is that concept so difficult for us to, to grasp? Is it because this does not apply in, in many other things in life and it, the opposite is kind of true. Like the more effort, the more work you do, the more return. In fact, mm. I got into it with somebody at the uh, underneath your video on Tom Bilyeu. I don't know if you saw oh, that. No, I didn't see that video. He posted and went kind of viral and there was a guy on there that says, oh, this is this is not true. He, he, and it was oh. some, somebody who lost like 100 pounds and was just like, all you have to do is work harder, more hard work. And I'm like, yeah. you know, unfortunately, buddy, that's not how this works. And especially if it's uh, for long-term results. I mean, you may be able to will your way to your first 100 pounds down and stuff like that, but eventually that super low-calorie diet, that super slow metabolism that you have now catches up with you, and then in most people, there's a reason why 80-plus percent put it back on. So what is it that causes us to, to not see that, to look at a routine and go like, I want more, or I want to build a butt yeah. now, so let me throw more on? Is, it, is that why? Because there's nothing else... That's like that. That's, I mean, it's a general rule that tends to work, not always, but it tends to work. I think people hit the wall in a lot of ways with that. Like at some point, they start to work too much or they start mm -hmm. to do too mm -hmm. much in other areas. But with fitness, I mean, it's the same thing. I think part of it is that we don't know there's a sweet spot. So we tend to trend towards what we can tolerate versus what's the best amount. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is the best amount. Let me do more. Let me do more. Let me do more. And your body can tolerate it, but you're getting less and less results. And then when you get less results, you think more um, is the answer. The other thing is I think people don't realize that cumulative volume uh, matters, uh, not necessarily just specific volume. So it's like, well, my whole body can handle all this exercise, and I think my glutes can handle more, so I'm just going to add more to my glutes. But there's it all adds up. Yeah. It all adds up, and then your body can't I think can't people adapt. are just impatient of course. by nature, of and course. that's really what drives it because – um, they want to see in a short condensed window, you know, how much they can move the needle and transform their body in a certain direction. Uh, the sustainability conversation is a really tough one to have with your average person because, uh, you know, it's not, it's not on the forefront. It's not on their top of mind while they're like, you know, in this motivated state where they are taking on this, um, pursuit and they want to see results as fast as possible. I'll do anything. Like, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add this and this. It's all the adding game. Uh, and you know, it's, it's tough because then you're in a position then where it, you got to sort of talk them back down and figure out now, what do we do now that, you know, we've actually done this too much and now we have to, um, you know, basically deconstruct that and find a better plan that'll be more sustainable. Yeah. It's, um, y y targeting specific areas with training is a programming what I mean by that programming is like a workout design problem and it can be solved. Most people don't understand it. They just think uh, target this area, do more for that area. That solves the problem. That's not how it works. So anyway, my point with this is when you get to this point where you're generally getting stronger, really starting to improve, the ball's rolling, and you're going to, most people are going to get to a point where they're going to want to target specific areas. Don't just add work to those specific areas. Look at your total work take some away from other areas that are doing great, not don't work them out. But you know, if, if your, if your shoulders are responding really well 
and you're doing 12 sets a week for them or something like that, and you want to add some to, let's say, your quads, you could take some away from your shoulders. They're not going to decline. It requires very little to maintain what you built, by the way. So whatever you've built with strength training, uh, once you're there and you want to maintain, you could reduce way down the volume and you'll keep it. Studies are very clear on this. You take some away, add it to this other area. That's generally what you want to do. It, it can get, you know, it's more specific than that with good programming, but generally that's the biggest mistake I would say people make. But if you do it right, you'll be able to shape and sculpt your body like a sculptor uses a piece of clay or a piece of marble, which is, which is kind of cool. The next thing is to really learn how to do more with less. This is where everybody gets stuck. Because everybody thinks more is better. More is better. That's not true. More is more. More is not better. <laughs> yeah. It's almost, it's, it's, it's not better. It's better at first when you do it right. And then it stops becoming better. And then it becomes better is better. So you want to learn, especially with consistency, because here's the, here's the, the hardest thing for busy moms is to get started. The second hardest thing is to keep it going once they do get started. Because mm -hmm. it's a high fail rate. It's a very high fail. Like everybody does it for five to six months but nobody maintains it for a year, two years, three years and beyond. So you really want to figure out how to do more with less, less equipment, less time, uh, less volume and less frequency. How do you do this? Make the workout as effective as possible. And I want to be clear. Effective is not hard. Mm -hmm. Every time I say make a workout more effective, the average person thinks, oh, I just got to make it harder yeah, more and intense. get more sore. No, 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 no. <laughs> Intensity is a factor how sore you get and how tired and sweaty you get is a factor, but that does not indicate effectiveness. If it was, then any idiot could be a coach or a trainer and everybody could get in shape by just going and running in place as hard as they could or jumping up and down as fast as they could, right? Because that's hard and that makes you sweat. No, no, no. Figure out how to do more with less and really start to learn how to fine tune your workout. Really, it's like any job that you do. When you're doing a job, you start to figure out how to use tools to make yourself more efficient. Mm -hmm. You could dig a hole with a spoon. Uh, it, it definitely could happen. It would take you a long time, but man, you start to figure out how to use a shovel. Now you're doing a lot of work with way less time. So do more with less. That way you can uh, maintain this on a much more regular basis because what you don't want to do is do less with more and then it get interrupted because it will get interrupted <clears throat> because you have kids. That's the other thing too. That's a point that I even put up here is expect that. Expect you're not going to make every single workout because, again, like I said at the beginning of the episode, kids are super unpredictable. They're going to get sick. You're going to have to do something, whatever. So doing more with less means there's less to screw up because mm -hmm. you're just far more effective. Well, I, and I think that's probably um, one of the best ways to define what MAPS Anabolic is to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, sure. it's really the most... Uh, simple program that we have as far as the amount of exercises that are chosen to build that right and that was something that i communicated to katrina when we were going through this process with her after max and that was like listen i know there's gonna be days when things don't align and you can't get a full workout in you know pick the big one of the big five out of there because every day there is a one of those big movements in it maps anabolic and so i said doesn't matter what day you're on whatever like that if you, you know, they're already prioritized for you in the order that we want you to follow it. So knock out the, the big movement first. And if that's all you get, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You doing a, a good compound lift, one of the big five, meaning the overhead press, the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, or a row, like one of those movements is a good, is you're, you hit so much of the body in just that one movement. That you no, get, it would take five exercises to equal one of those. Yeah. Right. And so. so it's like, it's okay. It's okay that you you do that. I mean, that's, again, this is how MAPS 15 was kind of born. It's we, we literally take two of the big movements a day is all you're really doing in that entire routine. But those give you so much return. And I, I think so many, and I'm guilty of this too, as a, as a young trainer of overcomplicating the process of getting in shape and realizing like, God, if I just made it like routine that I never missed these big lifts. Like if you just hit every big lift one time a week, yeah. you'd be mm -hmm. surprised how healthy fit and strong I know. Of, a, of a body you would have. I had clients just from that, that we did just that Yeah, because their life was so crazy. We did just that. Yeah. And I had to convince them that that would be effective at first. Cause they're like, this isn't going to work. Right. And I would tell them, I actually had one lady. I just remember this. I just one of those memories that you, you just pop up that you forgot. I had, a, I had a client that I had to convince of that. And the way I convinced her was I said, look, if you don't get value out of doing that, I'll refund you. I never tell this to people because so much is dependent on the client 
that you know you'd end up losing money because uh, clients not the one they're not showing up they're not doing the work so it's always on them right but I told her I'll refund you as long as we do this if you don't get the value out. and afterwards she was like I did not believe you I did not think it would work in <laughs> fact I was doing this to prove you wrong and I can't believe how my body's progressing and I said because it's effective yeah we're focusing on what is effective now that takes us to the next point uh, which is when time does permit add volume. Uh, and add the time that you are working out. And, and now this is going to ebb and flow. This yeah. isn't just, you know, over time I've been working out for years. So now I could do more and I get, you know, I have to do more to get more results type of deal. That's true. Also, I mean, when I say this, that there are going to be those times when you put your kid down, they normally nap for an hour. <coughs> they're down for a wow, while. They're still sleeping. Yeah. I'm going to add some more exercises yeah. or some more mobility or, Hey, grandma, is taking the kids today or hey you know they're with the other parent or whatever i got more time this is when when time permits you can add now don't here's i, I do also want to be clear don't just add junk volume <laughs> yeah. and yeah. junk exercise no, to stick it stick with the big guns yes Definitely. yes do good workout programming have it organized so that when the time does permit here's what i'm going to do and then boom you get this incredible uh, result from doing so. So when you add that time and that volume, when time permits, you reap the benefits of it. Not just the fact that you're moving more, but you're actually moving towards, uh, you know, this this, well, this goal. And I think that's why it's important in the previous point that you look at it. And yes, it's it's simplistic, and you're doing. It seems like you're doing less, but really you can approach that too with doing more, but what you're doing is you're sharpening and honing in on the skill of that yeah. lift, which then recruits more muscle fibers, which then makes you more effective at that lift, which then you can carry that into now, if I'm going to add, uh, you know, more exercising to my workout, I'm already super effective here. And then I just add a little bit more now at this point, because I'm good at this, that it's all going to move the needle still. It's not just wasted effort. Right. You know, it was really interesting. The experience that Katrina had, like, you know, using this philosophy, it was, it was a bit serendipitous the way it panned out for her because she ended up getting these great results from it. And I remember us communicating about it and going like, you know, Maybe what's happening is that you... You had to experience it. Well, not only that, but like when you had these days where you had the 90 minutes or someone took it, it was like it also aligned with like your stress levels and rest levels. Like you all of a sudden had more time to work out because the baby got more sleep or maybe I relieved you or like that. So then you could get after it at the workout. You could increase volume or increase intensity a little bit. And then days when it was a little more hectic and stressful, maybe you just did a little bit of mobility or 15 minutes or 20 minutes of working out. It was kind of interesting how kind of just uh, giving yourself that uh, freedom to say, I don't have to have this perfect structure every single day that, and it's a failure if I don't finish it or do this. It's just that, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ebb and flow with my lifestyle, with my stress levels, with my sleep, with the baby sleep, and then just give myself that permission to go in and do one exercise on some days. And mm -hmm. then days when I feel great and rested and someone else has a baby or I come home early or something like, ah, I'm going to get after it. And I, it, it was kind of interesting. It really forced her, I think, to instead of like, cause she was, she's an ex athlete, right? So she has that athletic mindset where if you tell her what to do, like I'll do it. Right. And she'll like muscle her way through it. Where when we were going through this process together and she was asking me, well, what do I do? I'm like, I was, a lot of the conversation sounds like this conversation we're having now was I was saying, be like water. You, you, yeah. It was, it was like, <laughs> be like water, you know, feel how you're feeling today and really go off of that and learn how to listen to your body, pay attention to your rest, pay attention to your stress levels. And then here's all these different things that you know are supporting you or helping you towards your pursuit. Learn to pick and choose when to throw. And it just worked. It were, This is the beauty, but also the challenge of strength training. The beauty of strength training is it's so effective. There's no form of exercise that's as effective on a time for time basis, right? And when you're comparing when you're comparing direct time, 60 minutes of strength training, 60 minutes of cardio, 60 minutes of strength training, 60 minutes of any other form of exercise, when it comes to sculpting the body, speeding up the metabolism, burning body fat, and just getting results, okay? Strength training is super, super effective. The 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 beauty of strength training is it's the most individualized, uh, individualizable, I should say, form of exercise. I can take it and mold it and shape it to anybody anybody's schedule, it's almost a formless form of exercise in that sense. It's amazing. Now, here's the challenge of that. 
the average person is like, well, what do I do if I got this infinite number of ways to modify this and follow this pro, you know, workouts and like, I know exercises, but you're telling me I got to put them together in a particular way. And sometimes I'm working less. Sometimes I'm working out more. Sometimes I don't have equipment. Sometimes I do have equipment. Like, what do I do? This was the value that we brought as personal trainers. And we know that the average person doesn't have access to a trainer, maybe doesn't have the funds to working with a trainer. So here's what we have. We have workout programs. And what we did is we put together all the best workout programs for this category that we're talking about right now. And we have several bundles that we've identified to be the best for this particular individual. Now we talked to our sales uh, team. They wanted to put it on sale. We said, let's put it on even bigger sale. So here's what we're going to do. 60% off every single one of the ones that applies. And what do we put in these bundles? Programs that allow you to work out without equipment. Programs that let you to work out for 15 to 25 minutes. Programs that give you more time when you have more time, when you can go and lift weights. Programs that utilize those big compound lifts so you get the most bang for your buck. Programs that allow you to target specific areas so you know what that looks like. So we have all that and more in all these bundles and programs that we've categorized for these particular individuals. The names are the Fit Mom Bundle, we have the Bikini Bundle, the Fabulous 40s Bundle, and the Build Your Butt Bundle, which includes, all of them include multiple programs. Every single one, 60% off. So if you're interested in doing one of those, what you do is you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, find one of those bundles, and then use the code FITMOMS, and that'll give you 60% off any uh, one of those things. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me on Instagram at Mind Pump Stefano, and you can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. Today we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the. Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 